If there's one thing we can count on about science, it's the never-ending pursuit of filler for holes in theories and explanations for the unexplainable. In astronomy, this pursuit becomes a way of life, because so much cannot be put to the scientific method for an absolute definitive conclusion. Nowhere is this more evident than the beginning of the universe, the earliest moments of the Big Bang. Over four decades ago, brilliant minds sought to explain what seemed unexplainable, and what they came up with is inflation theory, a mind-blowing concept. Welcome to Tech Rumor. In today's video, we peel back the layers of this dramatic micro-moment in time and what it tells us about the universe, or even if it's real. It didn't explain everything. The Big Bang Theory emerged in the 1920s and slowly gained acceptance as the most likely construct of the earliest days of the universe. It explained much of the nature of the cosmos, especially Edwin Hubble's nearly century-old observation that galaxies are generally racing away from us. And it has been propped up in the last half century by the discovery of the cosmic microwave radiation CMB background, the ratio of elements in the universe, and other nice and tidy clues that add up to the universe popping out of an almost infinitely small point some 13.82 billion years ago. If you could run time backwards, you would see the universe collapse in on itself into that infinitely small point, far smaller than an electron and unimaginably hot. But it didn't explain everything. For one, temperatures across the CMB are virtually uniform, which flies in the face of a cosmic fireball scattering in all directions. The photons that have been traveling nearly the age of the universe certainly have not had time to cross the cosmos in the opposite direction from which they came. In other words, those far-flung corners of space look almost the same no matter where astronomers turn, with a level of precision that's baffling, to put it mildly. Secondly, to put it simply, why is the universe so flat? Our best satellite data tells us the universe is flat in the sense that parallel lines traveling through the cosmos will remain parallel, when some curvature over time is expected under the auspices of original Big Bang theory. In fact, Einstein's general theory of relativity makes mass bend space and time, which logically leads to a universe with mass such as ours having some curvature, in one direction or another. But throw the lack of curvature in with far-flung directions all having nearly the same temperature, and something appears amiss. And behind door number three, the ever-present monopole problem. Under that same original Big Bang cosmology, there should be huge quantities of monopoles, which are heavy and stable magnetic particles with only a single pole. But there aren't. Plenty of electric monopoles to be found in particles like protons and electrons, but none of the magnetic variety. Why? Back to where it all began. In 1980, attempting to plug these holes in an otherwise sound model for our universe, Cornell University theoretical physicist and cosmologist Alan Guth tied the missing monopoles and universal flatness together with the pesky problem of universal sameness. Inflation theory. In a trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second after the Big Bang, what was then the universe experienced an almost unimaginable growth spurt. In that tiniest fraction of time, the cosmos expanded 100 septillion times. In other words, that onion you were holding is now 100,000 times the size of the Milky Way. That's cosmic inflation. What Guth proposed is that the universe expanded so rapidly, much faster than the speed of light, that monopoles were scattered far and wide, and an eternal search might not dig one up. Faster than light? Wait a minute, you say faster than light? Yes, because the light speed limit only applies to things in the universe, not the universe itself. Plus the fact that the density and matter of the universe is the specific value, what cosmologists call critical density, to make it flat as opposed to curved, fits into inflation theory as well. That is, the expansion of the cosmos was so rapid, the onion to the 100,000 times Milky Way, that effects of curvature at the moment of inflation would be almost entirely nullified. Thus, the parallel lines mentioned earlier, which should be curving away from each other but are not, are due to the extreme speed. And we get a flat universe. The problem of uniformity in the universe is also explained by Guth's theory, as inflation causes the CMB across the universe to have a virtually even temperature. While in the brief time before cosmic inflation, the almost infinitely hot and dense speck that was the universe had evenly distributed energy. However, quantum mechanics tells us that at the most minuscule levels, there will be slightly higher or lower density spots here or there. Think of them as seeds. When the bang occurred and inflation supersized the universe, the tiny regions of higher density over time became galaxy clusters, stars, planets, and you. 
The theory, which was radical thinking when first published, has established itself in the pantheon of huge sweeping notions of the origins of everything. Inflation theory is now a standard bedrock of cosmology, taught and retaught as one of the theoretical cornerstones of our understanding of how the universe came to be. But don't think for one second that the debate is over. Far from it. And now for the pushback. Alan Guth did not formulate inflation theory by himself. Help was received from colleagues Andre Lind, Paul Steinhard, and Andy Albrecht. And along the way, one of the Fab Four rethought his position and is now an ardent critic. Paul Steinhardt had this to say in Scientific American. The cosmology community has not taken a cold, honest look at the Big Bang inflationary theory or paid significant attention to critics who question whether inflation happened. Rather, cosmologists appear to accept at face value the proponents' assertion that we must believe the inflationary theory because it offers the only simple explanation of the observed features of the universe. Steinhardt and two of his colleagues even argued that cosmic inflation is not even a theory saying, as we currently understand it, inflationary theory, cannot be evaluated using the scientific method. Ouch. Part of the issue is the proliferation of literally hundreds of models of how the inflationary process occurred, and predictions of what they led to. And, since the predictions cannot be tested, the number of models that can be imagined and applied as evidence for unknown outcomes is limitless. Are you ready for eternal inflation? No, that doesn't mean your taco will soon cost a million dollars. Rather, it's the idea that when the exponential growth stopped, it did not stop all at once, everywhere. Guth, who spawned this inflation model and gave us so much to consider, provides an even more interesting nugget. It's hard to build models of inflation that don't lead to a multiverse. This theory involves bubbles, cosmic bubbles. If the universe did not evenly stop its exponential growth, little bubbles of space could have stopped in different places. These bubbles, in a rapidly expanding universe, would get farther and farther away and grow into the resulting space between. The result? Everything around us, all that we see, is but a single bubble among an infinite number of other bubbles. Did we mention that there are things we will never be able to test with a scientific method? But it sure is fun to imagine them. So what do you think about inflation theory, and what it tells us about our universe? They say rules are made to be broken. But does that also include the laws of physics? And are we in but one of an infinite number of bubbles that make up our multiverse? Tell us in the comments. And as always, thank you for watching Tech Rumor.